Hi there everyone, my name is Andre Marius, I've been working in Illustrator for over 10 years and in this Sembatotas Plus tutorial I'll put my experience to use as I show you step by step how you can create this flat character design using Adobe Illustrator. As always before we begin make sure to check out Embato Elements where you can get unlimited downloads of stock videos, music, graphics, photos, fonts and many more. That's millions of creative assets, all ready to use and with simple commercial licensing. You can subscribe right now using the link in the description. If you haven't done it already, feel free to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Remember to check this bell icon to make sure that you'll be notified whenever new tutorials are published. And that being said, we can move to Illustrator. Let's create a new document. Select pixels from this drop down menu. Set the width to 850 and the height to 630 pixels. Make sure that the color mode is set to RGB and the resolution to 72 pixels per inch. And then you can create your document. Start by pressing Ctrl M plus to zoom in on your artboard. Then go to window in the menu bar. And first of all, make sure that the control panel is active. And then open all the panels that have this check mark. Once you're done, go to view and enable the grid. Go again to view, but this time enable the snap to grid feature. For this tutorial, you need a grid line every one pixel. So let's go to edit, preferences, guides and grid. Just enter one in this grid line every box. Now, actually you won't need to see the grid all the time and you might find it a bit distracting. So let's disable it. So select hide grid. The only thing that matters is that our ships will be pixel perfect even when the grid is not visible because we have the snap to grid feature enabled. Let's delete this shape and start by selecting the rectangle tool. Simply click on your artboard to create a 540 by 10 pixels shape. Keep it selected, select the stroke and remove the color. Continue with the fill and let's replace this white with 208. 118 and 65. Switch to the selection tool so that you can move this shape and this position. Once you're done, press Ctrl C and then Ctrl F, which will add a copy in the same place. Let's squeeze this shape using the bounding box and make it about 450 pixels wide. Make sure that you keep the 10 pixels height. Once you're done, Keep this shape selected and replace the fill color with 222, 135 and 81. Now select both of these shapes, switch to the direct selection tool and using these widgets you can simply click and drag which will turn your rectangles into rounded rectangles. Continue with the pencil tool. First of all double click it and set the smoothness to this point. Click OK to apply the changes. Let's select the stroke and set the color to black. Select the fill and remove the color. Make sure that the stroke weight is set to one point. And now simply click and drag to add some wavy paths along your rounded rectangles. Until you end up with something that's somewhat similar with this. Once you're done, you need to select all of these paths. This can be easily done using the select same feature. Just use the selection tool to select one of your paths. Then go to select, same, and we'll use stroke color. And as you can see, this instantly selected all the paths that have a black stroke. Now you need to press Ctrl and G to group these paths. Now that you have the group, you need to mask it, so select the largest rectangle from the layers panel, press Ctrl C to copy it, and then Ctrl Shift and V, which will add a copy in the same place, but on top of the rest of your design. We'll select this copy along with your group. Make sure that you hold down the Shift key to add the group to your selection, and then go to Object, Clip and Mask and Make, which will mask your group. Make sure that you keep it selected and let's change the blending mode to soft light. Now that you got the tabletop, let's continue with the legs. So reselect the rectangle tool and this time create a 12 by 85 pixels rectangle. 
we'll fill it with 92, 92, and again 92. Use the selection tool to move this shape roughly in this position, and then press Ctrl and plus to zoom in on it. Let's align it with the left edge of this rounded rectangle, and then while holding down the shift key, move it about 22 pixels to the right. Keep in mind that you can have a look inside the info panel to know exactly when you get to 22 pixels. When you're done, press Ctrl C and Ctrl F to add a copy in front. Squeeze this copy and turn it into a 12 pixel square. We'll replace the color of this new shape with 77. Then reselect the rectangle tool and use it to add a 6 by 215 pixels rectangle. For this new shape, we'll use a lighter gray, so replace this color with 107. Use the selection tool to align this gray shape with these other gray shapes. Remember to send it to back. Then press Ctrl and minus to zoom in on your selection. Select all of these gray shapes and while holding down the Alt key, click and drag to add a copy. Keep in mind that you can also hold down the Shift key, which will constrain the movement of your copy. And let's move it about 44 pixels to the right. Remember that you can have a look inside the info panel to know exactly when you get to 44 pixels. And then release the mouse button to add your copy. Let's continue with the rectangle tool to add the base for these legs. You'll need a 100 by 10 pixels rectangle. We'll keep this color. Let's move this shape and this position. Add a copy in front, so press Ctrl C and then Ctrl F. Replace the color of this copy with 122. Let's squeeze it and make it about 80 pixels wide. Then select both of these shapes. And as we did for the tabletop, use the direct selection tool and these widgets to turn your rectangles into rounded rectangles. Now you can select all of your gray shapes. Press Ctrl G to group them. Send this group to back. Press Ctrl N0 to zoom back on your entire design. Select this group. Remember to hold down the Alt key and drag a copy of these legs about 440 pixels to the right, like this. Now that we're done with the table, let's add some items on it. We'll start with a flat computer, but first considering that we'll add a bunch of new groups and shapes, let's organize the stuff in the layers panel. So select all the shapes that make up your table, press Ctrl G to group them. You can double click the name of this group and we'll rename it table. And now we can continue with the rounded rectangle tool. Again, click on your artboard to create a 135 by 85 pixels rounded rectangle. Set the corners radius to 10 pixels and click OK to create this new shape. Replace the fill color with 243, 230, and 222. You can press Ctrl M plus to zoom in on this new shape. Then press Ctrl C and then Ctrl F twice, which will add two copies in front. Select this front copy and move it about 10 pixels to the right. Now hold down the Shift key and add to your selection this other copy. Click the minus front button from the Pathfinder panel and fill the resulting shape with 255. 242 and 233. Continue with the rectangle tool and use it to create a 45 by 55 pixels shape. Fill it with 236, 223 and 215. Let's place it somewhat like this. Continue with the direct selection tool and use it to select just this point. Move to the control panel and let's set the corners radius for this point to 15 pixels. Now select this entire shape and press Ctrl C and Ctrl F to add a copy in front. You need to move it 30 pixels to the left. 
hold down the shift key to add to your selection this other ship and click the minus front button from the Pathfinder panel. Then press Ctrl C and Ctrl F twice to add two copies in front. Select just the top copy and move it five pixels to the right. Add to your selection this other copy and click the minus front button from the Pathfinder panel. And we'll fill this resulting shape with 248, 235, and 226. Let's also add a solid shadow for this stand. So reselect the rectangle tool and use it to add a 20 pixel square. Replace the fill color with 216, 206, and 197. We'll use the selection tool to select this square along with this shape. Click it again to make it the reference shape and then just click these two buttons to easily align your square with the left and top edge of this reference shape. Go to the layers panel to easily move this square behind the two shapes that make up the monitor stand and then reselect the rectangle tool to add the base for the monitor stand. You'll need a 60 by 5 pixels rectangle. Let's move it in this exact position and then drag it behind the rest of the ships that make up the monitor stand. Using the eyedropper tool you can easily fill this shape with the color of this one. And then switch to the direct selection tool so that you can turn this rectangle into a rounded rectangle. For the final touch you'll need the ellipse tool so select it from your toolbar. Just add a 20 pixel circle. Again, use the eyedropper tool to fill this shape with this color. Let's place the circle roughly in this position. Then select all the shapes that make up your monitor and group them. So press Ctrl G. You can rename this group monitor. And then place it right on the table, somewhat like this. Moving to the graphics tablet, you'll need again the rounded rectangle tool, so select it. Click on your artboard to create a 100 by 50 pixels shape. Keep the corner radius at 10 pixels and click OK. Press Ctrl and plus to zoom in on this new shape. And first of all, replace the fill color with 228, 215 and 207. Then select the shear tool from your toolbar and double click it. We'll set the angle to 40 degrees. Keep this horizontal box checked and click OK to distort your shape like this. Then press Ctrl C and Ctrl F twice to add two copies in front. Select just the top one and move it about 10 pixels to the right. Once you're done, add to your selection the other copy and again click the minus front button from the Pathfinder panel. We'll fill the resulting shape with 235, 222, and 214. Continue with the rectangle tool and use it to add a 60 by 33 pixels shape. You can press Shift and X, which will swap the fill and stroke color settings. Select this stroke and replace the color with 220. 205 and 198. Let's increase the weight to 2 pixels. Then switch to the direct selection tool so that you can select both of these points and move them about 10 pixels to the right. Keep these two points selected and let's also set the corners radius to about 8 pixels. Then use the selection tool to select this entire shape. Move it roughly in this position. Continue with the ellipse tool and use it to add a 15 by 10 pixels ellipse. Again, press Shift and X to swap the fill and stroke color settings and then move this shape in this position. And now that your graphics tablet is complete, you can select all the shapes and group them. Rename the group. And again, as we did with the monitor, let's place the tablet on the table. Somewhat like this. Let's drag the tablet below the monitor in the layers panel. And we'll continue with the coffee mug. Again, select the rectangle tool from your toolbar. Start with a 32 by 25 pixels shape. 
let's make it green so select the fill and set the color to 179 212 and 82 you can press ctrl and plus to zoom in on this shape switch to the direct selection tool so that you can select the top points and set the corners radius to only two pixels then select the bottom points and this time set the radius to 9 pixels select this entire shape and add two copies in front so press ctrl c and then ctrl f twice select just the top copy and let's move it five pixels to the right then add to your selection the other copy and click the minus front button from the pathfinder panel and we'll fill the resulting shape with 195 224 and 105. For the handle you need again the rectangle tool so select it and use it to add a 12 by 15 pixels shape. Use the eyedropper tool to fill this new rectangle with this darker green. Use again the direct selection tool to select just these two points and set the corners radius to 5 pixels. Now select this entire shape and go to object path and offset path set the offset to minus 3 pixels and click ok select both of these shapes and again click the minus front button from the pathfinder panel let's move this shape and this position drag it below the rest of the shapes that make up your coffee mug and then reselect the rectangle tool to add a 16 by 3 pixels shape let's move it in this position Keep it selected and switch to the direct selection tool so that you can select just these two points. Set the corners radius to only one pixel. And now move this shape behind the rest of the shapes that make up your coffee mug. Select them all and press Ctrl G to group them. Rename this group mug. And move your mug on the table like this. Now again you need to reselect the rectangle tool as we're about to create some books. Start with a 67 by 12 pixels shape. Press Ctrl and plus to zoom in on it. Then replace this color with gray. So let's enter 122 in all of these boxes. Continue with the direct selection tool and select just these two points so that you can set the radius to 6 pixels. Then select the entire shape and go to Object, Path and Offset Path. Keep it set to minus 3 pixels and click OK. This new shape should be a bit darker, so replace this color with 107, 105 and 106. Then remember to hold down the Alt key and drag a copy of this darker gray shape about 5 pixels to the right. Using the direct selection tool, select just these two points and move them 4 pixels to the left. Keep this shape selected and let's also replace the fill color with 255, 242 and 233. And now reselect the rectangle tool and use it to add a tiny shape in this location. Select it along with your larger gray shape. Click the minus front button from the Pathfinder panel and let's move this shape behind the rest of the shapes that make up your book. Continue with the line segment tool, so select it from your toolbar. Let's add a simple horizontal path like this. Keep it selected, select the stroke and set the color to 245, 226 and 212. Lower the stroke weight to 0 0.5 pixels. Then use the selection tool to drag a copy in this position and another one in this location. When you're done, select all your lines and group them. Select the shape that lies in the back and press Ctrl C and then Ctrl Shift and V to add a copy in front on top of your lines. Select it along with your lines and as we did with the tabletop, let's mask the group by going to object, clipping mask and make. Now return to the rectangle tool. Use it to add a 22 by 6 pixels rectangle. Let's make it black. 
move it in this exact position and don't forget to change the blending mode to overlay then select all of these shapes and group them remember to rename this new group book hold down the R key and drag a copy of this book on top of the original one you can rotate it let's add one more copy on top of these two books then using the direct selection tool you can select these two shapes that make up the book cover click this recolor artwork button which will allow you to easily recolor the book cover all you have to do is drag the sliders and play with the colors once you're happy you can click outside this window continue with the second book again select these two shapes click this button move this panel aside and play with the sliders somewhat like this now you can place your books on the table and we'll continue with the character design first of all let's rename this layer table add a new one and name it character keep it selected and as usual we'll start with the rectangle tool First we'll create the head shape and for this you'll need a 50 by 80 pixels rectangle. Press Ctrl and plus to zoom in on this new shape. Replace the fill color with 173, 102 and 56. Continue with the direct selection tool and first select the top anchor points and set the corners radius to 19 pixels. And then select the bottom anchor points and set the radius to 23 pixels. Reselect the rectangle tool and let's add the nose. For this one you'll need an 8 by 17 pixels rectangle. Replace the color with 157, 85 and 37. Switch to the direct selection tool so that you can turn this rectangle into a rounded rectangle and then place it roughly like this. Continue with the year, so reselect the rectangle tool and use it to add a 7 by 13 pixels shape. Let's align it with the nose shape and then move it right on the edge of this head shape. Switch to the direct selection tool so that you can select just these two points and set the corners radius to 5 pixels. Moving to the eyes, you'll need to select the ellipse tool. Use it to add a tiny 4 pixel circle. Let's fill it with 63, 33 and again 33. Align this shape with the nose and move it about 5 pixels from the nose. Then remember to hold down the Alt key as you drag a copy of this shape. Move it 5 pixels from the nose but to the left. For the eyebrows you'll need again the rectangle tool. Add a 10 by 5 pixels shape. We'll keep this color. Turn this rectangle into a rounded rectangle using the direct selection tool. Then move this eyebrow on top of this left eye. Let's drag it about 5 pixels up. And then again drag a copy to the right roughly in this position. Now we'll also add a mustache for this guy, but to create it first we need to save our own R brush. Start by reselecting the ellipse tool, use it to add a 10 pixel circle, fill it with 96, 50 and 52. Continue with the direct selection tool and select just this point. First move it 12 pixels to the left and then click this button to easily turn your point into a sharp point. Now select this entire shape and move to the brushes panel to save it as an R brush. You need to click this new brush button, check the R brush box and click OK. We'll keep this default settings. Again click OK to save your brush inside the brushes panel. Now feel free to delete this shape. Continue with the brush tool. You can press the B hotkey which will select the brush tool. Make sure that your save brush is selected and let's draw the mustache. When you're happy with the look of it, you can select both of these paths and move them behind the nose shape. 
and we'll continue with the mouth. Reselect the ellipse tool, just add a 10 by 8 pixels shape. Again, press Shift and X to quickly swap the fill and stroke color settings. Replace the fill color with 200, 119, and 66. We'll move this shape right below the mustache and also behind it. And now we can continue with the rest of the hair. For starters, you need to select this main head shape and add two copies in front. Select the top one and move it 6 pixels to the right and then 6 pixels down. Now select both of these copies and click the minus front button. Fill the resulting shape with 96, 50 and 52. Continue with the rectangle tool and let's cover this bottom side of this new shape. Select this rectangle along with this new shape and again click the minus front button. Reselect this main head shape and again add two copies in front. This time you need to move this copy 6 pixels to the right and then 24 pixels up. Again select both of the copies and click the minus front button. We'll use the eyedropper tool to easily fill this new shape with the same color that we used for the eyebrows. And continue with the rectangle tool as we need to add some extra hair. Just add a 65 by 30 pixels rectangle. Let's move it in this exact position. Actually, we need to make a small correction, so select the eyebrows and the eyes. And let's move them about 3 pixels from this new rectangle. Then return to this rectangle and switch to the direct selection tool. First of all, select these two anchor points and set the radius to 12 pixels. And then select just this point and set the radius to 25 pixels. Now to further stylize the hair, select again the pencil tool, swap the fill and stroke color settings, set the stroke color to 173, 102, and 56. Make sure that the stroke width is set to only one pixel. And let's draw some wavy paths along the beard and the hair until you end up with something that's somewhat similar with this. When you're done, select all of these paths, group them and mask them using the same techniques that we use for the tabletop and the books. Remember to also lower the opacity of this masked group to 20%. Now that we're done designing the head of this character, we can select all of these shapes and group them. Name this new group head and we'll continue with the body. Press Ctrl and plus to zoom back on your entire design. And as always, select the rectangle tool from your toolbar. Let's add a 70 by 135 pixels shape. Make sure that the fill is selected and set the color to 64, 92, and 132. Continue with the direct selection tool and set the corners radius to 20 pixels. Then double click the shear tool, keep the horizontal box checked and set the angle to 20 degrees before you click OK. Now you can select the head shape and press Ctrl plus to zoom in on it as we want to place this shape in this position. When you're done, you can press Ctrl and minus to zoom in on your selection. Drag it below the head group and reselect the rectangle tool. This time you'll need a 30 pixel square, so create it and replace the fill color with 238, 95 and 99. Switch to the direct selection tool so that you can set the corners radius of these bottom anchor points to 15 pixels. Select this entire shape and go to Object, Path and Offset Path. Set the offset to minus 5 pixels and click OK. And then use the eyedropper tool to easily fill this new shape with the same color that we used for the nose. Now select both of these shapes and let's move them in this position. Also drag them below this head group. And now we can continue with the arms. Again select the rectangle tool. For the first arm you'll need a 17 by 96 pixels shape. 
keep this color and continue with the direct selection tool. Select these two points and set the radius to 15 pixels. And now let's move this shape roughly in this position. Continue with the rectangle tool and use it to add a 49 by 17 pixels rectangle. Align it with the left edge of this other shape. And with the bottom edge of this shape, use the direct selection tool to select just this point and set the corners radius to 13 pixels. Then switch to the ellipse tool. Click on your artboard to create a 22 pixel circle. Let's place it in this position. And return to the rectangle tool to add a 5 by 50 pixels rectangle. Switch to the direct selection tool to easily turn it into a rounded rectangle. Also replace the color with 254, 241, and 235. Continue with the selection tool and use this bounding box to rotate your shape somewhat like this. Move it in this position and don't forget to also drag it behind this ellipse. Then reselect the rectangle tool and let's add a sleeve. A 17 by 40 pixels rectangle will be enough. Use the eyedropper tool to fill this rectangle with this pink. Then switch back to the selection tool, hold down the shift key and add to your selection this hand shape. And then use the shape builder tool, hold down the R key and simply click this section which will remove it from your design. Now use again the selection tool to select this sleeve along with the hand shape, hold down the R key to drag a copy to the right, move it roughly in this position. You can use the reflect tool to easily flip it. And then remember to right click it and send it to back. Now you can select all of these shapes. Let's lock this table layer so that you can easily select these shapes. Press Ctrl G to group them. Let's name it body. Drag this group below the head group. Then select both of these groups and move your character in this position. Let's also drag this character layer below the table layer. Keep this layer selected and let's continue with the legs. As always, select the rectangle tool from your toolbar. We'll start with a 100 by 20 pixels rectangle. Let's move it roughly in this position and now you can press Ctrl plus to zoom in on it. Make sure that this rectangle covers the bottom side of this body shape. Using the direct selection tool, you can easily select just this shape from the body group. Press Ctrl C to copy it and then remember to deselect your shape to be sure that the copy which you're about to add will land outside this group. So press Ctrl F and as you can see, the copy is now in the top of the layers panel. Select this copy along with this rectangle and click the intersect button from the Pathfinder panel. Fill this resulting shape with 75. 137 and 152. Continue with the rectangle tool and let's add a 23 by 130 pixels shape. You can press Ctrl minus to zoom out. Replace the fill color of this new rectangle with 122, 178 and 191. Move it roughly in this position. Make sure that the direct selection tool is active as you need to select these two points and set the radius to 10 pixels. And then just this one and set the radius to 20. Reselect the rectangle tool and let's add a 30 by 20 pixels shape. Move it on top of this other shape like this. Then use again the direct selection tool to select just this point and set the radius to 20. And again, these two points and set the radius to 7. Now move to the bottom side of this shape and we'll use the rectangle tool to add a shape that has the height of about 22 pixels. Align it with the bottom edge of this shape. Then select both of these shapes. 
Using the Shape Builder tool, you can easily remove these two sections. Just remember that you need to hold down the Alt key before you click. Now use the Selection tool to select just this shape and replace the fill color with 173, 102, and 56. Using once again the Rectangle tool, let's add a 29 by 8 pixels rectangle. Turn it into a rounded rectangle. So use the Direct Selection tool. Replace the fill color with 144, 196, and 209. And let's move this shape and this position like this. For the shoe, we'll use again the Rectangle tool. Start with a 40 by 20 pixels rectangle. You can fill it with your body color using the eyedropper tool. Then use again the rectangle tool to add a 25 pixel square. Let's fill it with 255, 242, and 233. Let's move it next to this blue rectangle. Press Ctrl and plus to zoom in and place your square like this. Next, you need to use the Direct Selection tool to select these two anchor points and set the radius to 12 pixels. Now select both of these shapes and press Ctrl- to zoom out a bit. Continue with the Pencil tool. Make sure that the stroke weight is set to 1 pixel. Select the fill and remove the color. Select the stroke and set the color to 235, 222, and 213. Now use the pencil tool to draw three paths, somewhat like this. Once you're done, select this shape and add a copy in front on top of your paths. Remember to group your paths. Select this group along with this front shape. And as we already did in this tutorial, go to Object, Clipping Mask and Make to mask your group. Now reselect the Rectangle tool and let's add a 62 by 5 pixels rectangle. Use the eyedropper tool to easily fill this rectangle with this color. Let's move it in this position. Then add a copy in front and fill it with 96, 94, and 92. Squeeze it and make it only one pixel high. Then you can select all of these shapes and group them. Press Ctrl and 0 to zoom back on your entire design. Let's move this group and add it to the leg. Move it in the layers panel below the rest of the shapes that make up the leg. Press Ctrl and plus to zoom in on this shoe. So place it somewhat like this. When you're done, select all of these shapes and group them, which will make it easier for you to create the second leg. Actually, let's start by selecting this group and press Ctrl plus to zoom in on it. Continue with the rectangle tool and add an 80 by 23 pixels rectangle. We'll fill it with this color using the eyedropper tool, then move it in this position. Reselect the rectangle tool and this time add a 45 by 23 pixels rectangle. Let's fill it with this color and move it in this position. Using the direct selection tool, select these two points and set the corners radius to 7 pixels. Move these two shapes below your leg group. Select it. Hold down the Alt key and drag a copy to the right. Go to Object, Transform and Rotate and we'll use this box to rotate our selection 15 degrees to the right. And now let's move this rotated group in this position. You can use the Zoom tool to zoom in on this area. We can disable the Snap to Grid for a few moments and let's move this shape in this exact position. Now you can zoom out. Remember to turn back on the Snap to Grid. And because our character is still floating, let's add a chair. Again, start by selecting the Rectangle tool. But before we create any new shapes, let's add a new layer. Name it Chair. Drag it below your character layer. 
Keep it selected and now we can start the work on the chair design. Just click on your artboard to create an 87 by 105 pixels rectangle. Let's replace the fill color with 207, 120 and 66. Continue with the direct selection tool. Use it to select this anchor point and move it 7 pixels to the right. And then select this other anchor point and move it 7 pixels to the left. Move up to the top anchor points and set the corners radius to 40 pixels. Select this entire shape and go to Object, Path and Offset Path. We'll set the offset to minus 8 pixels and then click OK. Now select both of these shapes and click the minus front button from the Pathfinder panel. Let's press Ctrl and plus to zoom in on our selection. Continue with the line segment tool. Remember to hold down the shift key to easily create a vertical path which roughly divides your selected shape in half. Set the stroke weight to 6 pixels. Let's select the stroke and set the color to 192, 109 and 57. Continue with the line segment tool and let's add two oblique paths somewhat like this. Now that you have the first one, you can use the selection tool to duplicate it. Hold down the Alt key and drag a copy to the left. Then use the reflect tool to flip it. And let's place it roughly in this position. Now you need to select these oblique paths along with the vertical one. Go to Object, Path and Outline Stroke, which will turn your strokes into vector shapes. Select the first shape and bring it to front. And reselect the rectangle tool to add an 83 by 8 pixels shape. Place it in this exact location and then use the direct selection tool so that you can set the corners radius for this rectangle to 2 pixels. Next you need to select these two shapes and merge them using the unite button from the Pathfinder panel. And then select these other three shapes and turn them into a compound path by going to Object, Compound Path and Make. Now that you have these two paths, you can select the Pencil tool and add the texture that we used for the tabletop. Again, you need to draw the paths, mask them and then change the blending mode to Soft Light. Once you're done, you can select all of these shapes and group them. Press Ctrl and 0 to zoom back on your entire design. Let's move the chair behind the character. Zoom in on this area so you can place it exactly in this position. And now let's continue with the rest of the chair. Again press Ctrl and 0 to zoom back on your entire design. And as you probably got used to, select the rectangle tool. We'll start with a 72 by 5 pixels rectangle. Let's make it gray, so set the fill color to 82. Press Ctrl and plus to zoom in on this area and place this rectangle right below the other chair elements. Continue with the direct selection tool and select these two points so that you can set the corners radius to 5 pixels. Now reselect the rectangle tool and let's add a 25 by 40 pixels rectangle. Don't bother to place it in the exact position, just make sure that you stick it to this other shape. Continue with the rectangle tool and this time add a 15 by 23 pixels shape. Use the eyedropper tool to fill it with this color and again stick it to this shape. Then add a 7 by 109 pixels shape. Using the eyedropper tool, fill it with this color and stick it to this other shape. We can press Ctrl and minus to zoom out so we can have a better look at what we created so far. For the base, you'll need a 50 by 10 pixels rectangle. Let's turn it into a rounded rectangle using the direct selection tool and then place it in this position. Continue with the rectangle tool and let's add a 100 by 4 pixels rectangle. 
Again, press Ctrl M plus to zoom in on it and use the drag selection tool to turn it into a rounded rectangle. Let's move it right below the shoe. Reselect the rectangle tool one more time and this time let's add a 50 by 4 pixels rectangle. Turn it into a rounded rectangle and place it right below this other rounded rectangle. Now you can press Ctrl and 0 to zoom back on your entire design. Select all of these gray rectangles. Click this top shape which will make it the reference shape and then simply click this button from the control panel to easily align the centers of your selected shapes. Now we want this chair to be a bit more visible so let's lock the layer, select the character and move it a few pixels to the right, somewhat like this. Finally let's add a simple background. Start by adding a new layer and name it background. Select the rectangle tool. You can press Ctrl N0 to have a look at your entire artboard. Create a shape that's the size of your artboard. Let's fill it with 254, 194 and 204. Keep it selected and move to the control panel. Make sure that the alignment is set to artboard and then simply click these two buttons which will move your selected shape to the center of the artboard. With the rectangle tool still selected, let's add a 600 by 15 pixels shape. Replace the fill color with 253, 169 and 182. Let's move it right below this desk. Actually, you can use this button to center it. Use the direct selection tool to turn it into a rounded rectangle. And with this final touch, your design is complete. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. Remember to hit that like button as it helps me know that I did a good job. Subscribe if you aren't already. And don't forget to click the little bell icon to be notified of any new tutorials. I'm Andre Marius and I'll see you in the next video.